Okay, folks, so this one is gonna be mostly talk. I'm not gonna really be showing much uh, as far as machining goes or even wiring. We're talking about VFDs today, variable frequency drives. And um, I have a lot of these around the shop. Pretty much all my three phase equipment has a VFD on it to convert it to single phase. I run all 240 in the shop. I don't have three phase accessible to me. So it's all VFDs, okay. So real quickly, what is a VFD, right? Well, in the simplest terms for these purposes, when we're talking about converting something from three phase to single phase power, okay? The VFD simulates three phase. So basically it takes your single phase power and um, chops it into three phases, right? So the phases are out of sequence, it splits the voltages accordingly, uh, but it cannot change voltages. So if it's 240 in, it's 240 out, you know, you're gonna have the same thing no matter what. So you can't go from a 480 volt motor to a 240 drive with a VFD. You have to have everything matching voltage wise across the board. This merely splits up the frequencies to allow you to run three phase equipment on single phase. Okay, now there's a lot of fancy stuff that VFDs do in automation and manufacturing and many, many, many other features that you can get into these. We're gonna not touch that today. This is just a simple topic, okay. So we're gonna start out simply. I have my uh, air compressor as a three phase air compressor running on single phase through a VFD. And I have a summary of that on my channel and I'll try to remember to put a link into that so you can see that here. But um, what it takes to do that is relatively simplistic. So we're gonna start out uh, showing the normal way that your air compressor runs. So I, I can't find my dry erase marker, so please forgive me. I'm gonna have to write on this paper and it's gonna be all over the place. But let me move the VFD to the side, okay? And we're gonna go really, really simply and dramatically oversimplify this, but anybody who's familiar with an air compressor is familiar with your gauge right here. So we've got our little gauge and usually it's on or near a switch box, okay, that the power comes into. Okay, so we're going to call this 240 V in, okay, right here. And that's our 240 in going into this switch box. And this is what basically turns the compressor on and off. So here we got our little dial with a needle and 10, 20, 30, our PSI is listed around there. Okay. So now what we have is out of this box, okay, it's going to go out to the motor. Okay. Boom, boom. Here's our motor that is going to spin and it's got a belt and it goes off to the compressor and the whole deal. We don't need to worry about the mechanical side of the, uh, of the air compressor, obviously, since we're working on the electrical. And this is really, really simply. In here is a set of contacts and you have a high cutout and a low cut in. And uh, you can Google this, please. I'm not going to go in depth on that. But basically what it says is if I set my compressor to stop at 100 PSI, as indicated on the gauge, and then I set it to come back on at 80 PSI. That's what this switch box does. And there's a set of contacts and springs inside where you can turn them and adjust the cut in and cut out pressure of your compressor. So that way, you know, you can make sure you stay within an operating range, whatever is good for your, your actual compressor. So again, we've got our 240 coming in. We've got our pressure going, it's through this switch, and then it goes out to your motor. Okay. That's our normal way we run things. Um, air compressors, this could be triggered by a breaker or an external switch over to here. Sometimes there is a switch wired in with this box that would interrupt one of these lines. So you have an on off switch that basically just says, regardless of what this says, don't send power to the motor. So you can turn your compressor off. Okay, there's our basic. Um, again, please Google this cut in, cut out switch if you're not familiar with how that works. Okay. Now we wanna go to three phase. So what we're gonna have is we have our motor over here. Okay, and we'll draw that bigger because it's a nice big three phase motor. But we have three lines going to our motor now, okay? And these are different phases. And again, Google that. I'm not going into how motors run on single phase, three phase, et cetera, et cetera. So in order to convert from this to this, okay? This is a normal single phase air compressor that you'd buy at Home Depot or anywhere like that. But if we've got a three phase, the three phase still has this same system. Okay, it has a gauge, okay, and has a cutout box, and it might even be the same, right? Let's say these are miraculously adjusted the same. Okay, so this is our control box, and then we have three-phase power coming in. Okay, 
And instead of having two contacts, this has three contacts. These are essentially just being relays with springs that use air pressure instead of electrical current to trigger the relay. That's it. Contactors, if you will. So now we've got a three-phase air compressor, but we only got single-phase power. So how do we go about doing that? Okay, that's where the VFD comes in. Now, it seems really simple and really obvious. Oh, well, I just plug my VFD into the 240 to feed it. Then I take the output of the VFD and I put it in here. And ta-da, my air compressor is converted. And you're electrically correct, okay? That would work absolutely fine, except because VFDs are computer devices. They have computer chips and circuits and all other sensitive electronics inside. This opening and closing of a motor creates an extremely high current draw, but more than that, it actually creates an electrical feedback that goes upward and will basically blow up your VFD. So although it seems obvious to put the VFD here, you can't do that. So what we have to do is essentially eliminate this switch, in a sense, I'll get to that in a minute, from the electrical circuit, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our VFD and instead of these wires going to that switch, those wires are gonna go to the VFD. So we'll come over here on the far right hand side and we'll draw our motor, okay? Put our little indicator arrow that that's a motor. There we go. And now we got three lines coming off, okay? But now we have our VFD up here. Okay, and those three lines go boop to the terminal board of the VFD. Okay, and over here, we're gonna take, and this will be our 240 in. 240 V in. Okay. So this is single phase 240 coming in. The VFD converts it to three phase going out. Okay. Now this will run your compressor, except we've got a problem. This is either on or off. Okay. So how do we control on and off? We have a pressure controller over here, but in this circuit, we don't have a pressure controller. So basically you would have to turn the VFD on. When the motor got to your max pressure, you would have to turn the VFD off. Otherwise this will just keep on running and damage your compressor, blow components up, uh, explode the whole thing. Uh, so you gotta be very careful with how this motor is activated. So inside almost every VFD is a little set of terminal strips. Do, 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 do. They're much more fancy arranged than this, but they're these terminals and they're for external contacts, external drivers, wherever. That's where our little box with our gauge, and our contacts inside for the 100 PSI and our 80 PSI comes into play. Okay, this is plumbed in to the air supply of the air compressor, obviously, that's how it's gonna measure the pressure. So what happens is when this reaches 100 PSI, the contacts open. So there's no electrical circuit that's created. When it comes down and it hits 80 PSI, the springs connect the contacts. So what we have now is a switch, just a plain old everyday on off switch. There's no longer any 240 coming in here. Up here, we had the 240 in coming into this box, okay? We don't have that anymore, right? And there's gonna be no power coming out of this box, okay? This is just freestanding. It doesn't need to be fed power because our power is coming in over here. Your VFD, and you'll have to read your instructions as to how your terminal works and there's some programming for the VFD you usually have to do to tell it to use terminal control instead of front panel control. Let me grab this here. Here's this one we can take a look at really quick. So here's our front panel control, turning things on and off, speeds up and down, power settings, programming, the whole deal. So we'll take a look inside here, okay? And here is the inside of the VFD with that terminal strip and our power connections that I mentioned. So here we have labeled power in one, two, and three. Um, I'll get to the three in a minute. VFDs can be single phase, three phase. There's a couple ways to do that. If you have a braking resistor, Google that. I'm not going into it. You would connect it here, okay? And then to your motor, right? One, two, and three out. So you'll use all three. You, you won't use all three on a single phase, okay? So in here, we've got our, our connections. I'll cover those in a minute. But here's that terminal strip I was talking about and reading the instruction manual of your terminal of your VFD will tell you which switch to which jumpers basically to connect with a wire or switch to turn your device on and off okay so let me move this out of the way so what we have is now we have a switch that has the on and off already you know programmed in if you will mechanically programmed by the springs and pressure sensing 
So all we need to do is identify which of these two contacts actually make our VFD send power to the motor. And hypothetically, let's say it's this one and this one. So we're gonna come down and that's gonna go into a contact. Then we'll come down and that goes into a contact, okay? Now, when this is at 80 PSI or below, these two are jumper closed. It completes that circuit. So now this pressure switch at 80 PSI has connected these, which basically jumper these inside your VFD and told the motor to come on, okay? As the pressure rises and it hits 100 PSI, those open up, disconnecting this and stopping the motor. So now what we have done is we have effectively fully converted our three phase compressor to run on single phase power. It's actually that simple. So where it gets really complicated, uh, this is a very simplified drawing of this. Three phase, and, and even a lot of single phase, uh, they have contactors inside when you get industrial equipment. So a contactor is a um, heavy duty relay, if you will, that allows the switching on and off of high current flow. You know, motors draw high currents, especially on startup. And uh, you know, when you open and close a contact, that's a, you know, if this is a seven horsepower motor, say it's drawing 20 amps on startup, it might draw you know, six amps running. So six amps running, 20 on startup. Oh, actually seven and a half, probably more than that. Uh, I think they're 22, 25, somewhere around there, but whatever, you get the point. So this, if it were switching just through the VFD, if this switch box sat over here in front of the motor, sat in this section, what would happen is we'd have that high current going back into the VFD. Because over here, there's no electronics, it's just going to the power grid, that's easily absorbed. There's nothing that we're gonna blow up, so it doesn't really matter. This switching takes care of it, and there's some relays and breakers in there that cover all that. And I'll get the camera over to my compressor and show you what I'm talking about, uh, so you can see some of this in real. But I wanted to show you the basics of it. This is really all we have to do. So now this used to have your 240 volt coming in. It originally had 243 phase because this is a three phase compressor right here. We basically just chopped these lines off because we don't need them to come in. We took these motor control wires out because we don't need them to go out. And we just picked a set of contacts and there's gonna be three contacts in a three phase system. So you got one here, okay, one here, and then we'll say this one's connected to it, and one here, this one's connected to it, Okay, and there's a few different ways. There's an oversimplification. Please understand, it's not an electrical schematic, just an oversimplification. So that these have a commonality, and when they close, you can see click, click, and we connect this line, and our system starts running. That's as easy as it is. Um, it's a lot harder, actually, to program the VFD, because you have to enter information about your motor horsepower, RPM, uh, a lot of other things. Again, read your manual. There are, I don't know how many different ones on um, Amazon for sale that read the reviews, man. It, honestly, if they've got, you know, under 5% bad reviews, it's, it sem generally seems to be a decent unit. Uh, but anything approaching 8% and above, I've had bad luck with them. Bad units, they gotta be replaced all the time. And you can get these things anywhere from a hundred bucks to a few thousand. Okay. So, uh, you know, read the reviews, do your research. Um, the brands seem to change because you know they're all made in China and they'll sell a bunch under one company name and once they sell that lot out, they'll sell a, a whole other group under another company name. So it's, it's really difficult to determine, you know, who's making a good one. Unless you go to like a brand name, like a Tico or something, but you're gonna pay big, big money for something like one of these. Okay, all right, so we've talked about this, the basics of what we're gonna do. We've talked about how we can use this terminal strip to activate this VFD, to tell it when to come on, when to come off, other sort of things. Okay, now down here. This VFD is a three-phase VFD. It doesn't work on single phase, okay? But it's identical inside to those that do work on single phase. I don't have a single phase one to show you. They're all on the machines at the moment, okay? So here we have three lines in for three phase. Some will do single phase and three phase, just saying, but this is a three phase only. So you would fit connect phases one, two, and three here, and phases one, two, and three there. Three phase in, three phase out. And you might ask yourself, well, what the hell? Why would I do that? You know, I'm not gaining anything. I still can't run this in single phase. This particular VFD references what I mentioned, a lot of other uses in the industrial world. So I've got three phase in, three phase out. I didn't convert anything, but what I did is I added computer control to the three phase out, right? I can have soft startups. I can have, you know, ramp up times. I can 
activate auxiliary items in conjunction with the motor using this terminal strip. So let's say hypothetically, um, I got my three phase out and it's going to a milling machine that has a coolant pump. I can take this three phase and I can program this. It says when the motor comes on, also connect a particular set of contacts that tells my coolant pump to come on. Okay, so there's an example of why you might have a VFD uh, doing just three phase to three phase. Okay, so real simple to hook up. Ours, you would just have two of these wires and the ground connected because we're single phase 240. Uh, for the VFDs that will convert from single phase to three phase. So you put your single phase here, three phase comes out over here. Again, read your instructions. Uh, everyone is slightly different. They're all similar, but they are different enough to matter. Okay, move that aside. Okay, so we've got our basics here of how this comes in and how it is controlled and the how and why. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the camera and we're gonna go over to the air compressor and we'll take a look inside the air compressor referencing my my build of how this is working. Okay, so let me go ahead and pause this and we'll get set back up over there. Okay, here we are back to a compressor that was a single phase that I converted to be a three phase, but it works in the same way. So I'm gonna show you this one first because it's a little simpler, and then we'll go over to the big compressor over here and I'll show you what we did on that one. So in here, this is our control box, and like I said, some of them have a switch on them, and this is very common. That, that you'll see among any big box store air compressor because these generally come with a cord you plug in. They're not designed to be hardwired into anything. Industrial units generally don't have a switch on them. They're generally designed to be hardwired. Okay, so we'll take this off, move it aside. And here's these contactors inside that I mentioned. Okay, and you've got spring terminals in here. And you notice I just got a little thin wire because this is carrying almost no current. It's 10 volts, I believe, for the signaling voltage and that's provided by the VFD. So I just picked one side or the other, it doesn't matter which side, because this is gonna come on at my low cut-in pressure and then turn off at my cut-out pressure. Traditionally, this actually had you know, my electrical wire coming in. The electrical wire would come in here and then this would jumper the wire and then I had wire that went out to the motor. Since we're not supplying any power to the motor from this, we're only using the signaling capability of this relay. Okay. It's a mechanical relay is all it really is. Uh, these are adjustable, like I said, cutting, cutout pressure, read, you know, Google that, that's one thing. But all you really have to do, and you can do this with a voltmeter once you have your power connected, is just see which two of these, if you don't know, usually there's a diagram, like, let me see here, yeah, this one, inside the lid, there's a little diagram here that tells you what everything does. But all you really have to do is, when it hits your low cut-in pressure, is these get connected and close the circuit. And that's it, and this is what runs up to that terminal strip I mentioned. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, stop here and I'm going to again go over to the big compressor and get the panel open and get set up to show you guys a shot over there and we'll go through the whole thing of how that one's working. All right I'm going to start out by showing a couple things. The displays you notice there's no lights. The power is off to this unit right now so I can demonstrate safely but poke around inside the electrical box without killing myself for you guys. But here's the basics of it. Okay, right here, we have our 240 coming in, this cord. So I got 240 and it's just jumpered to run 240 over to this side. And then we have our motor control coming out. I have two because I have a twin head compressor. You don't need two if you have a single motor, okay? So I have two motors, two VFDs. There's other ways to do this, but I chose to do this and those reasons are covered in the overview of this compressor. I'm not gonna go into them here. But basically, 240 in, single phase here, Right here is 240 out, two separate wires. Coming out three phase going to my compressor. You see this thin wire, that's a signaling wire from motor one. This is the signaling wire from motor two, okay? So let's go down over to the compressor, okay? Got the cabinet door open here, but what I wanted to show you is down here. These are the same switching units, the high pressure, low pressure, cut in, cut out, that I showed you on the small compressor over there. These are already wired in conduit and they come into the electrical panel over here, which we'll open up in just a second. But conceptually, it's the exact same thing. These are just mechanical relays. That's all they are running off air pressure and springs. Okay, they open and close contacts. That's all they do. Very, very simple. Okay, so now let's get into the panel here. And this might look a little intimidating and mind blowing, but don't worry about it. 90% of this stuff doesn't apply to most of the three phase air compressors that you'll find on the market. Okay. This whole piece here is a computer control. This 
particular air compressor. It can turn on one pump, two pumps, pump A, then pump B. It has all kinds of ways it can be programmed to come on, but we're gonna just ignore this and talk about a plain old everyday compressor and how that would work. Okay, before converting this to three phase, I mean, I'm sorry, before converting to single phase with the VFD, up here is the power distribution block. It has three blocks, as you can see, one, two, and three. There was a wire coming in, one, two, and three. One for each phase of the three phase power. You can see over here, I only have a single wire coming in. Uh, sorry, two wires for single phase. That single phase comes out and goes down into these contactors. Now, if you have a single motor, you're gonna have one side of this. There are two here because I have two motors. So I'm only gonna talk about one, all right? So just ignore from this piece over in the panel in a simplistic model, you're gonna have just one of these going through. So I have my contactor here, which is an electrical, uh, electrically activated heavy duty switching relay that has those contacts that allows those heavy motor loads to start and stop, okay? Then out here is a thermal overload breaker that if that motor is drawing too much current, this will trip the breaker. This is just a safety mechanism to be sure that your motor isn't burning up. And okay? not necessarily shorting out, but you might have a motor drawing too much power, okay? And then out of this, it goes to the motor. And that's all this does. Th these three red wires just go to the motor. So no big deal. So what we would do with our VFD is obviously no power coming in here, right? Because we're not running anything off the VFD. What I've done is I only have power here that is going to run the coils of these. This is hard to explain, and we might have to go back to the paperwork for that. But these have electromagnets in them that turn them on, turn them off again. You can Google how this works, okay? But in the very simplest of terms, we cannot use these to control power to the VFD. These must be activated by the VFD, then sending power to the motor. So what we have is when the VFD comes on over there from the pressure switch, it then sends a signal to these to turn on the contacts, okay? Then the three-phase power that is coming out of the VFD, because remember, the switch down there, the mechanical switch, told the VFD to send three-phase power out. Okay, so it sends three-phase power up, but it hits this, but this is a relay, and it's not activated yet. So in addition to sending the power out, these uh, contactors have a little loop that turns the circuit on when they're activated, then allows power to flow through, all right? So we're sending the power, um, sorry, not the power, we're sending the signal, the switching signal through these. We're not using them for power anymore. So what we have now is, I'm trying to make this clear, it's, a, it's easier than it sounds, but it's complex to the first time exposure. So the switch on the compressor tells the VFD to send power to the outputs of the VFD. Those must go to the motor. They cannot go through these, okay? These would basically if you put the output of the VFD through here, you're going to blow up your VFD. It's an easy way to do it, but it's not going to work. So what we do is we use the switch from the pressure switch down there to control these, which are sending the signal, right, the on-off signal to the VFD. It sounds very convoluted, and in a way it kind of is, because why not just use that switch? I'll get to that in just a minute. You technically could just use the pressure switch. You don't even need to have this stuff in here, okay? Really what's happening is the pressure switch goes off because we drop down to, say, our 80 PSI that we used on our paper demo on the table over there. So it now connects those wires, which then tells the VFD to send power out to the motor, okay? So that's really what's happening. That VFD wire comes in here and goes right down to the motors. This is the three-phase output from a VFD. It doesn't go through any of this, okay? What goes through this is that motor signal. And the only reason that that happens here is because of this computer control, okay? This whole computer control is wired in with these contactors to tell it what's happening when and where it goes, so I couldn't just eliminate these. You technically could take all of this out. And I just wanted to show you a, a complex version here, but we'll go back to the desk and I'll draw up the how and why of this, but I wanted you to see how it looks inside of a panel. So let me get back over there now that we've looked and we'll go over how we would wire through all of this. Okay, here we are back at the table and we've got some new paper so we can do some new drawings. Okay, so what we've got here is our box 
or electrical box. A little bigger, there we go. And we've got our set of contactors in here. Okay, and attached to it is that little thermal overload. And you can kind of think of these as one because they do pass through power from one to the other. Okay. And out of here is our three phase that originally went to our motor. Okay. So this is no longer going to our motor, but what we have effectively done, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. In the original, we had our bus bar up here that had those three bus bars in it. And this is where our three phase came in. That was our three phase power coming in. And then we would have one of these down here, down here, and down here, because this is a three pole unit. So let me try to separate these. It's a physical single unit, but it has three separate sets of contacts inside here. Okay. Okay. And these contacts are driven by an electromagnet. So I got three phase power coming in here. This is hot. Okay. These are open circuits, as you can see. So nothing is coming down to the motor. Okay. So what happens on the... Um, on the air compressor is something, something needs to tell these contacts to close. What that is on your air compressor, and we'll just draw this over here, is your little box that had our 100 PSI and 80 PSI. And these are variable, you can adjust those. So, you know, just for example, that's our switch, okay? And in our other compressor, uh, on the three phase model, the power isn't necessarily going through here, the signaling is. So we can come through and now we'll come through here onto our contactor. And there is a set of contacts in here that basically tells this contactor to energize an electromagnet closing these circuits. Okay. And now we have power going straight through. And again, this is oversimplified. There's a lot of different ways that are wired. I'm just trying to get the point across. Okay. So this is, in a very simple three-phase compressor, what you're going to see. This is the only, right here, thermal overload. That's our thermal overload. That's just that little breaker that I showed you. But then the three-phase power goes out to the motor. Okay, super simple. Now, again, we want to convert this with our um, VFD. So we're no longer going to have power coming in here and going out to the motor. So let's come over and draw that same box. Okay, and we'll do our power distribution block. Okay, and we've got our contactors here. Okay, and we got our thermal overload here. I'll just label it TO to be quick. Okay, now this went to the motor before, but as I mentioned, we can't do that, okay? So we've got a couple different ways we can go about doing this. And the wiring of your individual unit might dictate how you go about this. This is not 100% prescriptive. It could vary. But let's say we've got our VFD here. Okay. And this has the three-phase power coming out to our motor. Okay. And it's got two-phase power, or single-phase, sorry, our 240 volt single phase powering this VFD, okay? And it is converting it and sending it to the motor. These are not connected in any way yet. All right, so right here, we have no more power coming in. There's, over here, we had our three phase come in. There is no three phase, we're controlling our motor. So there's no power coming in, okay? But we still have these contacts here. Okay, and that's still the electromagnet doing what it needs to do to contact all of these things. Now, how you power this varies a little bit by contactor, make, style. So I'm gonna be real high level here and not get into the actual wiring. But essentially, all you need to do is if you recall that terminal strip that we talked about, okay? We're gonna take this terminal strip and we're gonna take one end of this and it goes here. Okay, and then the other connector, and it's gonna go basically down here. And I see that's open. So now we've got nothing going on uh, except our basic circuitry. So I've used this contactor as nothing more than a switch. So that just comes on, comes off, okay? No big deal. Um, 
and right here, this all would kind of work right now, except there's nothing closing this circuit telling the VFD to send power to the motor, okay? That's where, again, our little, and I'll, let me see here, for sake of completeness, I'm gonna draw it over here, our little gauge with the 180 cut in, cut out box with our little, you know, needle gauge on here telling us what our power is. We actually can trigger this unit, okay? Now this is where we get into how contactors work. Not gonna go in depth. Read it, Google it, there's a lot to look at. So in addition to these contacts, I stated there's an electromagnet that closes those contacts. Obviously, if it's an electromagnet, it needs to receive some form of power, okay? So we got some form of power coming in. Depending upon whether this is a 243 phase contactor, a 240 single phase contactor, a 120 single phase contactor, you gotta read about yours, right? But somehow we need to energize that electromagnet based upon this signal. So we've got our um, on-off cutoff switch. We our contacts here going through this, telling it what to do. So this switch can then connect a set of, um, a set of screws on your contactor that tell the VFD to complete the circuit for um, your electromagnet. So you're gonna have power coming in. So you would probably tap off your 240 here, right? So let's say we've got this 240 and we're just gonna tap off over here. And this is a separate set of screws and you'll see these researcher contactors, okay? So we got another tap going here. Okay. Now we have 240 coming in here to run the electromagnet. These are not connected to these contacts, okay? And then we have over here this as another switch and your contactor can have this as well, here and here. Okay, so now main power comes on, energizes, not sending power to the motor. Your motor power is actuated by this contactor closing, okay? Which is basically controlled by the electromagnets run by this, okay? This is essentially how mine is wired because I wanted to keep all that. Now, if you wanna get super slick, you technically don't need a lot of this, right? We can go way, way down. Cause you see, we have a switch turning on a switch that's activated by a switch. And there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, mine, I, I kept a lot of it again because that computer control board needed a lot of these inputs. So there's the high tech, high level, really high level. There's variances in all of this. Don't take this as gospel here. Okay. So now let's look at this in a really simplified single motor VFD three phase to single phase. Okay. So we're gonna take our panel that had our power block in it for three phase. We're gonna take our contactors, okay, and our thermal overload. And this had gone to the motor and there was the three phase power coming in here and then as I had drawn above, three phase power going to each leg of the contactor. It's got its switch, you know, it's, it's contacts through here. And then there's another set of contacts down here for the thermal overload, okay? And then this would go to the motor. Okay, that's our normal out of the box. Now, when we're gonna bring the VFD in, cause we gotta get three phase to this motor, but again, we can't switch the output of the VFD so we can't just plug the VFD into here because it would blow the VFD up. Okay, contactors are for safety, they're for high current switching, et cetera, et cetera, all these sort of things. Your VFD can simulate all of this, okay? Again, I did this in my compressor because of the computer integration, okay? So we actually can get rid of all of this with the VFD, okay? So what we would then do is we're gonna go to our VFD, so I'll draw that here, VFD, okay? And we're gonna do this, this as our 240 V in, single phase, right here, okay? And then we've got this, this, and this, which is our 240 V three phase out to our motor, okay? So now this is going, again, right to our motor, okay? Bloop, 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 
There we go, three phase to our motor. So now if I came to my VFD and hit the on button, that motor will start spinning and effectively my compressor is now running, okay? So we still need to control when it starts and stops. So that comes into our pressure switch as I showed you on my smaller air compressor. Okay, and again, the, our example is 180 PSI cut in, cut out. And then we got our little terminal strip that I had shown you earlier with all those little screw terminals. And whichever one your manual says needs to be jumpered essentially to activate power to the motor, you just take a wire from here and a wire from that other side. Now, completely eliminated all of this, okay? So where this really comes into play is in the brains of the VFD and what it has available. And this is when I talked about your advanced features. So we're gonna take a 240 volt single in, and of course, you know, we're gonna have a ground, right? We're not nuts here. So that's our ground. If I can make a G, there we go. So we got our 240 volt single phase in, our, two, our 240 volt, 243 phase out going to our motor. And we need something to control when the motor comes on, when the motor comes off, and that is our pressure switch. Okay. Put our nice little arrow on here for a pressure switch. And it's telling those jumpers to send power out. Okay, great. Now this is awesome. So now, if my VFD has power, this is gonna basically tell my compressor to come on and off. Now you can do a, a bunch of things. You could put a switch right here. Okay, so you could break this and put a switch right there. And now this could be powered all the time, 100%, all the time, hardwired into your breaker panel, right? And this switch just interrupts this switch. I know it sounds a little redundant, but that's basically what's happening in the lid on the small compressor I showed you, it had that on off switch. It's just disconnecting these wires. That's all it's doing. So there's, I think it, I, somewhere around 10 volts is what flows through there from the VFD just to sense that circuit, okay? So no big deal. It can be any switch that can handle 10 volts or whatever your VFD does. You have to read your manual, okay? But that's it. So you can have a wall switch just turns on and turns off. Your VFD stays on, this stays ready, everything stays wired, nothing to do. All right, if you wired it into your breaker panel and you just want to turn the breaker on and off, you could do that and not even have this switch and use that as control. Okay, now you say, what about all the safety stuff that this provides that's in the VFD? It can be programmed that way. You can program a soft start. So where here, those contacts close, that motor gets 100% power, at the right frequency and just bang, and it's, it's off to the races, right? And here you can do a soft start, and you can say, I want you to get up to max RPM over three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you wanna do. And it does a couple things. It's better for your motor because you don't have that inrush of current. It lowers the current draw of the entire thing because we're not trying to all at once make that thing run full speed. We're just speeding it up slowly, right? Then you can do the same thing on a ramp down when this closes. The motor can ramp down slowly, which helps prevent that back feed, that inrush of um, electrical energy that, you know, it, it's not gonna damage anything here because we're controlling the VFD, you know, the motor with the VFD. But it just electrically, you can make it a lot softer, a lot easier. Um, now what's really nice, this also can sense how much current is being drawn here. So if you have a motor that's going bad and drawing excessive current, you can program your VFD to shut it off, right? So you get that thermal overload protection that this piece down, this mechanical uh, thermostat, it's, it's really a mechanical thermostat that opens a circuit, that's what it is. You can program that in your VFD. So technically for all you guys out there with relatively simplistic three phase compressors, you can buy a VFD and just run it all off the VFD and skip everything in that box, basically. Right? You might reuse some of the wire because you know it might be wired to that location and it's easier to get to the wires. So you might use the box itself for all your wiring connections. You know, th between the VFD and the motor, the motor might be coming in to your box right here through a piece of conduit. And that's easier to get than going and digging out your motor. But that's really all there is to it. You can do this and safely run your three phase equipment on your VFD without any of your contactors, right? I actually have a mill, I mean, I'm a lathe, sorry, that is running exactly this way. And through all these switches, I have my forward, my reverse, my emergency stop, all these through the VFD, and it controls everything on the motor. Sp startup speed, start, you know, slow down speed, ramp up, ramp down, RPM, the whole deal. So I can control my, my lathe through the regular knobs 
you know, setting the speed through the gear change levers and everything else. But if I wanted to, I could just go to my VFD and change the frequency and speed it up, speed it down. That's uh, speed it down, slow it down, <laughs> sorry. But that's an advantage of a VFD. There's a lot of things you can do. So, you know, Google those, look them up. Um, you know, you can keep your machine in a single gear, but by changing the frequency, and you can overdrive a three phase motor designed to run on 60 Hertz. But if you run it on 120 Hertz, it's gonna spin twice as fast, okay? So the same thing, if you got it on 60 Hertz and it's going 1800 RPMs and you put it to 30 Hertz, it's gonna go 900 RPMs. So you have motor speed control through here as well. But again, the VFD is the key to that, that you can program these VFDs to do all of this for you. So that really sums it up. And I think that if you have a simple air compressor that doesn't have a lot of um, computer control, no brains to it, it's all just mechanical, you can gut all of that mechanical and go with a pure VFD solution. And that can work very well for you. So I really hope this helps. I hope it added some clarity uh, and more than confusion. But if you have questions, just please comment below and let me know. And I'm more than happy to help out with anything I can.